Let's talk about this video from Jimmy the Giant. He makes great videos. I'm a big fan of his content. He this mostly video makes what, videos what, what, about, I guess what you would call like extreme sports, like mountain biking, BMX, razor scooters, pogo sticks, stuff like that, parkour. I never thought that I could watch a video about parkour, but this man makes great videos, typically about that kind of stuff. He is so good that he made me watch a video about parkour. And he has this video called The Subculture the World Hated About Emo. I haven't watched it, but I generally like his videos. So let's check it out and see what Jimmy the Giant has to say about emo. Like skinny jeans, side fringes, and just throw in a little bit of self-hatred. And you have emos. Emos were wild, dude. Fringe. Fringe, that's what British people call bangs. They call it fringe. And also, have you heard of Vessi? They are a sneaker company that just might change your life. Their shoes are 100% waterproof, which makes them perfect for winter weather like this. Or, you know, if you just want to go out and jump in a puddle, that too. With Vessi, you don't have to worry about what the weather is going to be and what to wear. You can just leave them by the door and you are good to go no matter what. So I am stoked to have Vessi as the sponsor for today's video. The best part is that Vessis are comfortable and stylish, which means no more boots. Because to be honest, I kind of hate boots. They're super lightweight, comfortable, and breathable. And I live in Seattle, and obviously it rains a lot here. Or like today, it's just kind of this slushy snow. And it sucks going out for a walk in regular sneakers and coming back with my socks all wet and cold and gross. But with Vessies, I don't have to worry about that. They will keep you warm and dry in any weather. Vessies are the perfect gift under the tree and for your feet. Check out their holiday sale right now at vessie.com slash fin, or hit the link in the description of this video. Get the style and size you want right now before they sell out. And if you missed the sale, use the code FINN, F-I-N-N, for 15% off your entire order. She cries herself to sleep every night. The main target of just about any school bully, so much so that attacking an Chavs emo versus a emos. hate crime in the UK. However, these days, emos, for the most part, have disappeared back into the darkness from whence they came. <laughs> You Jimmy, you have no idea. Worst. You don't deserve me at my back! Today, we will explore what happened to the emo. Okay, Warning let's about see. a team phenomenon. It's that short it for emotion. What I want to know is how different his perspective as a British person might be from the American perspective. I am intrigued to know what British emos were like. Emo scene is sweeping the country. A dramatic rise in extreme violence against homosexuals. Wait, wait, wait. Fear as death squads hunt Iraq's gays and emos? Gay and emo followers on killing list by fundamentalists in Iraq. Is this true? No wonder we had to invade. We had to invade to save the emos. You people said we were fighting for oil. No, we were fighting to save the emos. Tools and emos. The news channel reads Bob Matthews investigates whether this kind of music can be dangerous for your teenagers. Between goth scene kids and chimos, which is an abbreviation for chav emo. There oh, are ch a, a chav emo. Okay. This is the content I came for. I want to know about chimos. A few subcultures that if you're not careful, you could mistake for being emo. Yeah, sort of like a convincing fake Charizard Pokemon card. So let's start off by trying to pin down what an emo is. Okay. The main what is emo, emo was... How do I put this? A little in touch with their feminine side. Their inner anima, as Carl Jung might put it. Very controversially at the time, they would wear black eyeliner, also known as guy liner. They would dye their hair completely black, then straighten that baby into a side fringe that would completely cover their acne ridden face. Then of course, they would wear black female skinny jeans. It's true, back then they had to wear girl jeans, borrow their sister's jeans, because back then they didn't make skinny jeans for men. It's true. Along with a black t-shirt from their favorite band. I don't know if I mentioned they like the color black. And then often they would have some piercings over their face. As well, these weird glove the things. The gloves. And then a nice pair of checkered vans or converse. I am obsessed with those the the stripy fingerless gloves. The females, if you will. The female emo was pretty much exactly the same. You know, maybe they would wear some more accessories just to cuten up the image a little bit. Perhaps a black skirt and very importantly, fishnet tights. You mm -hmm. see, this pretty much indis- She's too goth for me. That's what I think when I see these pictures now. They say she's too goth for me. This is before the big titty goth GF was everybody's dream come true. They had the big titty goth GF. They just didn't know it. Never forget what they took from you, my friends. Never forget. But you see, there was one very important characteristic of emos that we're completely overlooking. And that is mm. what they were like. I'm Derek. I play drums. It's 
about it. The what word band is emo he in? was short for emotion. <laughs> Dark, depressed, Sonny Moore. sad emotions. With self-loathing and self-hatred being the seed of which this dark, all-black aesthetic came from. Along with this particular association with... I don't know how to put this without YouTube nuking the video. Let's say self-destructive behavior, which is probably why they wore those weird gloves along with the armband. I think this angle, I don't, I don't agree with him on this. I don't think that like emo kids weren't like, they didn't hate themselves and they didn't want to unalive themselves. It was more like just your typical like suburban teenage angst, I think. It's, it's not as dramatic as what he's saying. Yeah, they're just kids being angsty. I don't think that they wanted to unalive themselves. I think that was like the stereotype that other people said about them, but I don't think that's true. You know, to hide their wrists. There was this romanticization of depression and angst. To be emo was to be sad. So how, and more interesting. It was more like, yeah, cutting was a thing. That's true. But, but I don't think it's true. I mean, there's like millions of kids that listened to Panic at the Disco and Fall Out Boy, and not all of them were like that dysfunctional. You know what I mean? You see, around the 80s, the hardcore punk scene had become synonymous with like violence, mosh pitting, vandalism, yes. and skinheads. But in 1985, right. everything would change with what was dubbed Revolution Summer. Okay. The term emo is actually short for emotional <laughs> hardcore. Okay, so the man did his research here, going back to the roots of emo in DC. The man did his research. Genre of music. Spawned in Washington DC, the genre aimed to pull away from punk's harder sound, as well as its more political, lyrical content. Miracle individual, spiritual miracle. This early wave wanted to focus lyrics on introspection, you know, personal and more sentimental topics. And there was one band yeah. that led the charge and that band was Rites of Spring, who are nowadays heralded yeah. as the fathers of emo. Very shortly I would agree after with they that. came out, in March of 1986, it would actually be Thrasher magazine who would coin the term emo this is core, true too i wonder if this guy watched my video about emo because these are a lot of things that i pointed out um not that it's like secret knowledge or something but i wonder if he watched my video used as an insult to describe the more whiny melodramatic nature of emo culture undeterred by the insults more bands would come along beefy r embrace dag nasty yeah. okay some pretty pretty obscure bands there that he got well done but you see, it wouldn't be until the 90s where this small niche would break out of the grips of Washington, D.C. and spread into Midwest America, sparking the second wave of emo. Sunny Day Real Estate, The Promise Ring, Cap and Jazz. This evolution solidified a more- I feel like he must have watched my video. There is no way that he would know about Cap and Jazz as like a whatever, like 20-something British person. He must have watched my video loyal fan base of emo culture as the lyrical content doubled down on being introspective and deep the youth of the day could connect to it they felt that it spoke to their sadness their troubles and ultimately spoke to what you could refer to as being a social outcast being a social outcast or a reject was the yeah but it's like social outcast light right because the real social outcasts were into stuff like black metal or crust punk like these are the real fucking misfits Emo people are like kind of on the normie end of being an outcast. They're not, they're not real fuck ups. They're like just kind of mopey. You know what I mean? Bread and butter of emo culture. Being misunderstood, trod on, bullied. These had become the key tenants of this bubbling new underground culture. But then everything would change at the turn of everything. the Everything. The emo way. Everything. E V E R Y F I N G. Everything. Bounds Beef E A. Completely take over. Three, two, one. Happy to Do the maths. Jimmy Eat World, brand new, saves the day. We've become these very successful emo bands in the early 2000s. Laying down the foundations for who. Love that video. The Holy Trinity of Emo. The Holy Trinity. Fall Out Boy being the father, Panic at the Disco being the son, and My Chemical Romance being the Holy Spirit. This I agree with that, but I, I think you really got to have Paramore in there, in my opinion. I would say Paramore belongs there maybe more than Panic at the Disco. Panic hasn't been emo for a long time. Obviously iconic at the time, but I, I feel like Paramore has a spot more. If I had to choose one band, Paramore belongs there more than Panic, in my opinion trifecta of emoism dominated mainstream culture during the mid-2000s. 
Goffs. G O F F S. I really can't how big these guys were. The sound, the clothing, big titty goff the way they behave. GF. Just like there's no love in it, but there kind of is. And just two people that are obviously separated um, by death. Unless, wow. you know. By death. They presented to the world a clear cut image of what it means to be emo. And my god, did the world lap it up. Emo went fully mainstream. In 2004, the emo band Dashboard Confessional. That's right, this was a big one. Two. Hot Topic became a very mainstream fashion album. Spider Man thing was a really big one. Radio, TV, magazines were littered with emo. So, how on earth did it grow so quickly? A few very important things can be pointed out for the reason that emos blew up Kay. in the 2000s. One of which being the inception of social media. Before TikTok dances, Twitter debates, and YouTube video essays on niche subcultures, on the 1st of August 2003, yep. a website by the name of MySpace was launched. The internet's most popular site, MySpace, MySpace. definitely the at the heart of 2000s emo, that's enough. for sure. I really don't chat with people except for like friends I know on like AIM. <laughs> Brandon, look at Brandon. Some kids think they're Here safe he is. enough. I really don't chat. Brandon the Pussy Master. To, like friends I know on like AIM. So MySpace was the perfect breeding ground to indoctrinate people into emoism. The thing about MySpace, which is very different to modern social media, he probably listens is to how Gent now. It was. Like you could change the background, the font, the music that played when you went onto your page. This was a dangerous weapon for the emos. I'm talking all black background, horror themed fonts, emotional paragraphs of self expression. That aesthetic is teams, still actually iconic. This aesthetic now, the like 2000 scene aesthetic, it's a great example of one of these things that was just naively created by teenagers in their bedroom that now in hindsight is actually an iconic aesthetic, right? I mean, you see people starting to bring this back and like you see it and it just instantly, you know what you're looking at. Um, I would say it's every bit as iconic as like the punk cut and paste kind of look. On horror themed fonts, emotional paragraphs of self expression from young teens, and the invention Live journal of a also thing called the selfie. You know, gorgeous Instagram models of today have emos to thank for the selfie. <laughs> All of this, it's plus true. the fact that you could choose the music that played on your page, allowed yep. a sound, a look, and an attitude to be presented to the world as emo. And obviously, people started to notice. Pete, Pete, last year you described yourself as Jack the Ripper Chic. How would you describe this year's fashion? <laughs> Uh, try not to get on the worst dress list. One of those people being record label executives who quickly jumped on the success of emo and pushed the holy trinity of emoism as hard as possible and they became mainstream superstars. Uh, I'm so emo. <laughs> uh, well, you could tell something was changing when Fall Out Boy's frontman Pete Wentz appeared on the teen magazine J14. That's this right, I love that one. Doubt been bullied in school was now Pete Wentz and J14, a iconic moment. Of other superstars like Gerard Way, Hayley Williams, Avril Lavigne, Brendan Yuri, they became household names. Yep. Now look, celebrity and aesthetics aside, I have to be honest about one thing. And that is this was the last time that alternative music or, or rock was this popular. There was new metal and then there was emo. Emo was the last time that rock music was this popular. If you're trying to tell me that Welcome to the Black Parade isn't an anthem, or Brick by Boring Brick, Sugar We're Going Down, I mean, come on, lads, these tunes slapped. And of course, mainstream pop culture was just lapping it up. Spider-Man 3, controversially, had this emo Spider dance. Spider-Man 3? Emo fringe Tobey Maguire. The author, Stephanie Mayer, That's right, the chemical romance was a massive inspiration for the Twilight. cringe the emo Spider-Man. It was going so well for emos. By the mid to late 2000s, parents, normies, and even chavs joined forces for what was to become the war on emos. The Minor, war on emos, Black from what I understand, was more of a thing in other countries, I remember like in South America, they had Pokemones. This is what they called them there because they had spiky hair like Pokemon, right? Pokemones. And I, I guess maybe in Europe, I, I feel like it wasn't really a thing here, but maybe I'm wrong. And there was something much more sinister going on. The sound is intense. Look, distinctive, feeling dark and angry. And that was the very dark nature of the lyrics. The self-hatred and wallowing wasn't just merely lyrics in a song, but they had come to embody a large chunk of youth culture's attitude in the 2000s. And so this sparked a moral panic. Parents were seeing their once happy kids who were running around with Barbies and colorful clothing, all of a sudden not leaving their bedrooms, dressed in all black, listening to songs 
that spoke on some very dark issues. And so the mums and the dads of the world started to worry what was happening to little Billy and Becky. And then in August of two- And now we have WAP and Ruby Rose doing vlogs with their dad talking about sucking dick. We didn't know how good we had it. Parents today would be begging for their kid to listen to My Chemical Romance or Panic at the Disco or Paramore instead of Ruby Rose. <laughs> like, please, please just dye your hair black. Please just anything other than like song after song about eating ass and sucking dick. Emo cult warning for parents. Oh, sh the article reads, what worries me is that teenagers are less equipped to manage strong emotions and a cult of suicide could have real and horrible consequences. It is irresponsible for the fashion and music cultures to encourage it. After the tragic passing of Hannah Bond in 2008, the emo cult was is. being held as responsible for her passing. The Daily Mail wrote an article saying, okay, so this is a UK thing. herself after becoming obsessed with emo side cult rock band and in that article they pointed their finger at one band in particular two weeks before her passing she started following u.s band my chemical romance i don't remember hearing about this at all Mail insinuated <laughs> that my chemical romance and emo culture were the cause for her untimely passing they then followed all of this up with one more article condemning the entire emo culture titled why no child is safe hmm. from the sinister, the sinister cult, cult of emo with one quote saying there is a very dark side to being emo which is about dressing in black and listening to music with very deep lyrics that could tip a vulnerable person over the edge you know there's a moral panic like this every generation and to some extent they're valid but they're also not you know it was like heavy metal in uh you know in the 80s and then it was gangster rap in the 90s and you know and then emo and whatever and then it's gangster rap now and, th and they're all valid you know like it is true that if you are one of these vulnerable people who's especially if you're young and you could kind of be tipped one way or the other Listening to music with like dark lyrics and stuff maybe could tip you in the wrong direction, but you know, I don't think emo, I, emo was probably the most harmless of all of those, right? Like relative to like gangster rap, um, I would say emo is pretty harmless. And to worry over emo kids was just one part of the war on emo. Emos had become victim to not just chavvy schoolyard bullies, but it got far darker than that. In 2012 in Iraq, there was what became Now this, I don't, I don't remember hearing about this at all. Where it's believed that somewhere between six or even 70 kids were kidnapped and or killed for being emo. In Russia, Jeez. laws were- And that's just sad. What they should have been going after is the, uh, the gent kids. Like, I think even the parents would understand, like, sir, we came home, we found this in your kid's room, and they hold up, like, a uh, a periphery album. To be like, no, you're right, take him, take him, He's it's too late to save him, take him. He's got to go. Pass to regulate emo websites on the internet, along with banning dressing like an emo in school. In Mexico, that's right. We found all these O O O's all over the walls. Take them. The right police. On the sixth of the sixth, O six, National Punch and Emo Day was declared. I do online. remember this. The yeah, the National Punch and Emo Day. This was like something like some like stupid like MySpace hardcore kids. Uh, started. I don't. I don't think this was like a real thing. This is just like asshole hardcore kids. The day was declared online. I'm not sure if anything really came of this, but there was a real hatred for emos. Like it got out of hand and it became disgusting. And the irony of all this backlash was the fact that emos considered themselves outcasts anyway. If the objective of these people were to make them not want to be emos, this wasn't helping. This was further. I remember this Fox outcast. News scene kids the emo special. World a pat on the back because they did stand up for themselves. They wrote an article calling people that listen to our music or fans of us a cult. F Daily Mail. And that nothing is worth hurting yourself over. It was even an emo Good message. protest over the Daily Mail article. The argument that emos were making was that this music was helping them. When you scream, you're letting your emotions out, and it's just kids can relate to it. This is great. I've seen this before. The Fox News Scene Kids special. It's from like 2008 or something like that. It's hilarious. One inside wants to scream out. And I, I used this footage in one of my videos, and one of the girls in this video saw it and commented. And she's like, oh my god, that's me and my friend Hannah. It was making them feel less alone and allow them to talk about their problems. So what was going on with this war? Was it justified or not?
I think you can break down the hatred for emos into a few different things. Firstly, when it comes to the violence against emos, a lot of that were to do with men who just didn't like people being gay or feminine. There was certainly yeah. more of a homophobic attitude in the two. There's, there's a lot of that for sure. He's saying it's a homophobic attitude. I think there's a lot of that. Yes, yeah, homophobic and just like there's a... And, and maybe not even that. It's just like this bully kind of attitude where there's a certain type of person that when you see a kid like this who's obviously kind of, uh, I'll say weak, and I don't mean that as a criticism. It's just like, you know, sort of a, a, a weak person. Their impulse is to like basically want to hurt that person even more. They're predators. When they sense weakness, they want to crush them, you know? And I think emo kids activated that in some people. Yeah, easy easy targets, exactly. There's some people that when they see an easy target like this, they just want to attack. Thousands, and especially so in these more socially conservative places outside of the West. But the other part I do think is more understandable, and that is the side of the parents. Like, just imagine seeing your kid dressed like this, listening to some pretty disturbing music, typing away on MySpace all day about how they hate themselves. It was definitely understandable that parents would be worried about what was happening to their kids. We're talking about emo yeah, music. That is understandable. If you start hearing this kind of music coming from your teen's room, do you need to worry about the dark <laughs> I love that one of those is a Rites of Spring CD. He said, if you hear this kind of music coming from your kid's room, do you need to worry? And he holds up Rites of Spring and My Chemical Romance. Yeah, if you catch your kid listening to Rites of Spring, you need to worry because he's a fucking nerd. You don't need to worry about them hurting themselves. So you do need to worry about him becoming an insufferable fucking nerd that's going to post on Reddit and rate your music lecturing people about what real emo is and isn't. Foods that emo encourages. And like if you open the newspaper, read the tragic story of Hannah Bond, and then the media is saying, if you listen to My Chemical Romance, this might happen to your daughter. It's understandable that parents worried. And like some people are going to disagree with me here, but I think it is fair to say that there was I a subsection of emo culture that romanticized mental health problems. Yeah, In the I 2000s, think that's true. the topic of mental health isn't what it is today. People kept yep. it very taboo. It wasn't really spoken about. And so for much of the emo subculture, the emo MySpace days and the music was their way of expressing the things they were going through. Emos would argue that the music helped them. It was cathartic for them to hear other people going through the issues that they were. I mean, it's the same thing as like, you know, grunge was when I was in junior high school, you know, when I was 13 to 16 years old, it was like the peak of Nirvana and Pearl Jam and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's the same thing. Every generation has some sort of artist or subculture that they latch on to to channel this kind of energy. See, there is an issue with the argument. If you're a young person and you're going through some kind of depression and you constantly surrounded yourself with negativity on MySpace, which then led to Facebook, which then led to the even worse platform being Tumblr, a platform that is synonymous yeah. Tumblr with, was with severe awful. mental health problems, who would literally post aesthetic looking memes around dark issues tumblr was so fucking music, toxic it's very very depressing all of that just cannot be good for you and in fact yep, there are studies right. done on this that back that up i mean i thought he's it was right. just common sense but whatever whilst all that might be true there is one thing we're missing i don't think that the by and large mainstream audience of emo was like that perhaps they weren't yeah. true emos perhaps they were something else in steps the scene kids now like typically oh there we go look at that the scene kids you see who he picked my digital escape your man brian stars in his scene era this is when he was like 25 or 26 when he started he ditched his blue aeropostale shirt and got his flat ironed hair brian stars 2.0 now, like typically all these labels, the word scene was used oh, in Oh, Halsey kind of came from Tumblr? I didn't know that. Who only got into emo culture when it was cool, mainstream, and they just liked the aesthetic of it. Typically, they took the hairstyle there we emos, go. but added in more Broke color, inside. dressed more colorfully. They were generally a little bit more trendy and cool. And look, scene kids were definitely a thing in and of itself. Not everyone who listened to emo culture were even seen, but they probably were more alike to them than they were. I remember when kids would like be very offended if the if you called them emo instead of scene they'd be like i'm not i'm so not emo i'm seen or like i am not seen i'm emo we're totally different but to emos like pretty much everyone i knew had the long emo fringe but weren't emos they probably rocked some skinny jeans some skate shoes and we enjoyed the emo music but we also enjoyed emo's brother pop punk bands like all time low blink 182 sum 41 occasionally i will say this though there was a part of scene kid culture that was really 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 dark do you guys remember um 
Stickam. It was a live streaming chat site, kind of like Twitch before Twitch. There was like a corner of scene kids that were into that stuff that got really, really, really dark and like Hunter Moore and Is Anyone Up? And a lot of those kids got real into like drugs and partying in a really, really, really dark, scary, unhealthy way. So even scene stuff got very, very dysfunctional. Although I would agree that it was generally speaking, kind of more bright and happy than emo scene got really dark too they would make emo tunes but were largely more yeah upbeat, hunter moore is a piece of shit i emo. wish he was still so in prison this defines more of the wider emo audience they dip their toes into the emo culture it was a vessel for them to let off just a little bit of teenage angst they might not have had clinical depression but like being a grumpy teenager isn't young a skrillex and this emo music became that outlet But as this war raged towards the end of the 2010s, the bubble would pop on emo culture. The emo kids were growing up. They stopped listening to From First to Last and started listening to Skrillex and the new dubstep wave. They finally overcome their teenage angst. The acne cleared up. They got rid of the side fringe. Emo was falling apart. They became hipsters. Even the holy trinity of emo denounced emoism. And so it was over. In 2013, My Chemical Romance disbanded. In 2009, Fall Out Boy went on a hiatus. And as well in 2009, Panic at the Disco broke up. And as quickly as it came, it went. So you might be there wondering, are there any remnants of emo culture? And I would say definitely. Emo culture was pretty yeah, much the absolutely. spark of what this mental health conversation we're having in society is now. But as for the slain phoenix, agree with that. was emo culture, eventually it would rise from the ashes. We're right here. I'll be back here. All yep, right. he's right. Emo culture would resurrect in 2017. But he's right. The monumental hip hop genre, emo rap. Yep. Spearheaded by Lil Peep and Goth Boy Click, along with Juice yep. World and even XXX Tentacion to some degree, these yep. guys became superstars and their music plus their aesthetic was very inspired by emo and punk in general. And even like more traditional emo sounds, mum jeans, modern baseball, mum as well jeans, as the pop punk revival that's currently mum happening jeans right and now, a bum bag, the likes of Machine Gun Kelly and Olivia Rodrigo. I wouldn't say this is emo as much as it is pop punk, but it definitely yeah, he's nods right. to that era. But taking more inspiration, emo from adjacent. Like but you see, the emos of the 2000s grew up. They moved on they got jobs in marketing developed an unhealthy relationship with coffee arguing about politics on twitter all day whilst ever yep. so occasionally attending an emo club night and still wearing a pair of all black vans as a nod to their former emo selves it's yep. been a wild ride emos we love okay it. good video i find it especially interesting to see kind of the stuff that uh happened in the uk and iraq and uh, and and wherever like south america where there, it really was kind of a war in emos. I don't think that ever happened in the U.S., at least not that I saw. Obviously, I was older at the time, so maybe I just missed it. But uh, overall, good video, nice work. Give Jimmy the Giant a sub because I think he makes great content. The man is so good that he even got me to watch a video about Razor scooters and parkour. If that doesn't speak to the quality of his content, I don't know what does. Thank you to Jimmy the Giant. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did.